All right, I want to say a special welcome to all of you who are tuning in virtually for this month's Coffee on Campus. I have a special guest who I am thrilled is joining me today, Victoria, who's a longtime parent at VCS. Thank you for saying yes and My joining pleasure. for Coffee on Campus. My pleasure. Yeah. So, you know, I have to be honest, Victoria, I, I felt particularly obliged for Coffee on Campus, even though the timing of our recording this is not necessarily great for coffee, but I felt obliged that I had to put some coffee in my cup. So I've got some coffee going here, and um, it is straight black coffee. No Perfect. cream, no sugar, no anything. And uh, I'm not sure what that says about me. Maybe it says that I'm uh, the parent of a six-year-old and a four-year-old. <laughs> but in any case... Or you're dentally conscious. Or I'm... De See, there you there go. You know. Yeah, I'm not going to forget that. Thank you, Victoria. <laughs> So you guys, uh, you and your husband Reza, have been connected here at VCS for how long? Tell us a little bit about your story about VCS. Absolutely. We've been here since kindergarten, actually. Uh, we have a son um, who's been here at VCS. Uh, he's in freshman high school this year. And so we've been here for quite a few years. We've been through the gamut of the kindergarten playground and then graduating into the elementary playground and the four square days and then middle school and then now on the other side of campus. Yes, you've seen the whole thing. I've seen the whole thing. I love it, wonderful. Well, today, Victoria, and for those of you who are tuning in, we are gonna be revisiting our BCS Maxim, Christian Faith Family Foundations. We're gonna talk a little bit about what it is and about what it's gonna mean for us as a school going forward. So I wanna begin talking a little bit about faith. This is, of course, foundational to who we are and to what we do as, as a Christian school, developing that foundation of faith. And so one of the things that we're gonna be really intentional with going forward, as our head of schools, it's really important to me that our families get connected in local churches. Uh, so one of the things that we're gonna actually be doing is reducing homework on and events on Sundays and on Wednesday nights so that our kids and families have that opportunity and. Uh, there aren't obstacles, right, to developing that connection with the local church. Uh, something else we're going to be focusing on going forward, which I'm really excited about, and I'm going to ask you about here in just a moment, Victoria, is missions and a focus on service. I, I personally am really, really fond of encouraging service in our kids. And I don't know about you guys, but for my kids, service takes the focus off of them and it puts it onto other people. And so all of a sudden it changes their mindset. Not only are they serving God, but they're developing gratitude versus entitlement. Tell us a little bit about what service has looked like for your family and why you guys think that's important for you. You know, that's such a good question, Ben. Reza and I, my husband and I talk about this subject frequently because we also bring our own, I think, experience as children into the whole scenario of the situation. And I think that when I was a kid, I would think about service as something that we did on weekends when we had the time. Mm. And uh, on Sundays after church, we would walk over to the convalescent hospital that was close to our church uh, with my parents and we would serve, homing and hawing sometimes, <laughs> of course, I think as most kids do, just that not- sounds like my home, Right, by the way. not recognizing the seeds that were being sown in us. Mm. Um, fast forward this many years down the road, the way that I look at service now, obviously as an adult, um, now I recognize that those are the seeds that were sown is the way that I feel about it now. But how I feel about it is that service is how I pretty much approach everything in life. Mm. If we approach anything that we do from a perspective of service, it brings more meaning and purpose, I think, into our individual lives. Whether it be as parents, if I'm cooking a meal for my family, instead of begrudging that, oh my God, it's a long day of work and now I'm here cooking for you. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at it from a perspective of service. I'm, I'm feeding this healthy meal to my family. Mm. That's service. You know, it could be work related. It could be, it could be in, it could be like you said, God has definitely given us the gifts and the talents mm. uh, to serve humanity as a whole. And our job is to figure out what that is. You know, and I appreciate about what you shared, Victoria. It seems like a small, subtle difference, uh, that perspective shift. 
and yet it's not small at all. It's, it's a pretty gigantic difference in terms of how we look at what we do, our obligations, our duties. And you use two words, meaning and purpose. If, if we can raise our kids, if we can partner with our families at VCS in a way that develops meaning and purpose, I think we've accomplished something pretty, pretty special in our school. So I, I love that. I love that. I want to jump in. The next thing we're going to talk about here is, is, is related. And it's, again, our maxim, faith, family, foundations. When we talk about family, what we mean by family, the key word is relationships. Relationships. And so I want to read this to you. This is really our goal as a school uh, in, in what relationships look like, my vision for what I want this to look like. Each student at VCS feels known and cared for by VCS staff. Every student, every staff member, and every parent feels a sense of belonging to the VCS family. Tell us a little bit about what your experience at VCS has been like uh, in connecting with the VCS family, Victoria. I can really share a couple of things with you because I'm sure we would all agree that we have our own family units and then we belong to the greater human family unit. Yes. And then we've got our school family, our sport hobby family, our church and spiritual family, perhaps our work family for us that are older. Um, and, and all of those families bring a sense of belonging, like yes. you said, to us. Mm -hmm. And in relationship, I think, to belonging is that belonging makes us be valued. Mm, we mutually yes. respect one another for each other's growth and development emotionally, physically, spiritually, intellectually. A family does all of those things. That's right. We're there to support one another, not just during good times, but during challenging times as well. That's right. So to me, VCS has been such a big part. When I say belonging, I think both my husband and I, and most importantly, not only our son, but I don't know if you know this, Ben, or not, but my niece um, started high school here. She just graduated a year ago from VCS during COVID. I remember that. And um, uh, I want to share a little bit about her because, so we grew up in San Francisco. And so she has been to some of the best private schools uh, in the city. Um, to give you a perspective, the tuition is very equivalent to what a great college education would be wow. annually. Yes. So uh, very well respected programs. And when she ended up here at high school, first week when I went to pick her up, mind you, she's new in the right. school. She doesn't know anybody. And she came home and this is what she told me. She goes, Auntie, where has this school been all my life? I wish I was here all my life. Yeah. Darian, you are so lucky. Hmm. And to hear this from a perspective of another high school student was, it said it all. Yeah. Belonging, she felt within a week of being here. It's amazing that she belongs and Absolutely. she graduated feeling that way to this day she's a second year in college mm. she every time she's here visiting me in town cuz she's moved obviously she will drop gifts off for the teachers in oh, the high school amazing. you know hearing that story just gives me chills because it is so central to what what we want to be as a school to what we strive for in developing those relationships i think this is such a big strength for our school and uh, the one of the key words in our mission is partnership. When we're in relationship, supporting one another, um, it's, it's that partnership in raising our kids to be godly kids. And so what, what we're really doing is we're partnering in that same mission and we're, we're able to do that together and have stories like the one that you just mentioned. That's what we hope for. That's what we hope for for all of our kids. I, I absolutely love that. That's and it's Wonderful. also true, Ben, that there are challenges along the way, like there are in an actual family unit. Yeah. I'm sure I've been married for 30 years. If my husband was here, he would uh, tell you that I'm probably the problem uh, <laughs> equation in the relationship. I'm sure everybody's spouses say that. But, oh, yeah. but um, in a school situation, it's the same. It's like a family unit. Yeah. There are challenges. Yeah. But the relationships and what we stand for is really what brings us together at the end of the day. That's absolutely right. I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing, Victoria. I want to jump forward and talk about foundations, this key piece. The goal, I'm going to try to put it succinctly here, is that we want to raise men and women at BCS who are intelligent, innovative, love God, and are people of character. 
And if we can do that and accomplish that, boy, we've done something really meaningful. So there are, so that's the goal. I want to share a little bit with you, Victoria, and a little bit with our viewers on some of the things that we're doing intentionally to reach those ends, to achieve those goals for our families and kids. Um, one of the things that we are very purposeful about is professional development for our teachers, our teaching staff specifically. So there are a, a, a number of intentional instructional practices that we're encouraging our teachers to develop. We're training our teachers on. Uh, one of those, for example, we've just trained our teachers on recently is called Socratic Seminar. And the idea behind Socratic Seminar is that we choose texts, we choose ideas, and I want to talk a little bit about those ideas that are going to be central to our curriculum and our program at VCS that are, are, are deep and rich and inspire intellectual curiosity. And we institute, instigate, really facilitate discussion amongst our students so that they have the opportunity to really engage with these rich ideas. So I want to share this with you because this is, I, I love this. Texts are chosen for their richness in ideas, issues, and values and their ability to stimulate extended, thoughtful dialogue. What? I think all of us want that kind of experience academically, that kind of rigor for our kids. And here's the, the analogy I would use. I love popcorn, right? I think we all love popcorn, many of Who us doesn't? do. And yet we can't exist off a diet of popcorn. And so we wanna feed our students in terms of the content of the curriculum, the curricular equivalent of steak versus popcorn, something that they can digest and ruminate on and, and something that is substantial and impactful. I'm really curious, hearing a little bit about that as a parent, how does that strike you? I absolutely love it. I, oh, couldn't, <laughs> I could not support that anymore, Ben. As you know, um, Reza and I have been a proponent of education in more ways than one. Yeah, you have. But not only education for the purpose of education, but education for the purpose of building our children's character in yeah. general. I'm going to read something to you because so Reza and I talk about so many things, the goals that we have for Darren. I think our son has definitely picked the wrong parents because he doesn't even <laughs> know behind the scenes. We have all these things that him yes. and I talk about, but we talk about him in terms of intentional next step. Yes. Intentional yeah. conversations. Yes. And we have implemented that in so many ways. He's in our car ride. By the way, I, I have to share that with you. That's my encouragement to you guys. <laughs> I sure hope that that is the case, even though he may not see it right now, but hopefully mm -hmm. someday you'll see that. But part of what him and I were just talking about last night was foundations. Mm -hmm. And we were saying, I'm going to read this um, Foundation of success comes from practicing the elements that lead to success. Oh, wow. Such as perseverance, commitment, doing things that you have never done before, mm -hmm. consistency, taking pride in your work, seeking advice from others that have accomplished something so grand that you might not yet have, mm -hmm. showing up day after day. And in order to do that, a curriculum must be Right. rigorous, must be exciting, mm -hmm. because our world, Ben, I feel has washed everything down. Everybody gets an award at the end of the day. Oh, and true? the real world is not that way. You and I know this. Yeah. They are not going to hand us a trophy nope. just for showing up. Unfortunately, I wish it were so. Right? <laughs> Me too. But it's not. Me too. But because that is not, we, we were saying that we personally want to see that kind of an education, yeah. that he comes home excited. I walk by other schools that I don't want to name in town, and it makes me so sad, Ben, to see these children with the shoulders down, heads in their hoodies. Oh, isn't it, sad? it just makes me really sad. And the other day, I picked Darian up from school, and this is a true story. He's having a challenging course, as many of the freshmen do this year, mm -hmm. and he has great admiration for his instructor. The bar is up, and he has stepped up to the plate like you cannot believe oh, and for me to see that and at the beginning of the year he didn't do so well mm -hmm. in that class the way that he wanted to mm -hmm. but that's because he was performing to how things have been for him before sure so he had to show up with a different character right yeah. so we talked about it and i said your grade is just telling you that you are not 
uh, stepping up to the plate the way that mm -hmm. this class is demanding of you. Yeah. You're in high school now. Yes. And you need to step up to the plate and build the character this, that, that this class requires of mm -hmm. you. And I bet, I bet if I were to ask you in Reza, you would probably say that that you had a twinge of difficulty and challenge as parents. It's difficult to see our, our kids strive for success and yet sometimes not quite meet the bar in the ways that they should, knowing that the experience is formative. Yes. The challenge, the rigor is, is ultimately going to help Darian become more successful in, in every respect. And so I bet that was challenging. As it well. was to watch it, but because I have been through that, because Reza has been through that in our lives in a multitude of ways, sure. not only in the past 30 years of work, but also the rigor that we had to go uh, through to get to where we were. Yeah. So I knew that he has to build up a certain character to rise up to the occasion and meet this challenge. But what I want to share with you is mm. that during the last few exams in this particular course, and I, like I shared with you, he has such immense respect for his instructor and he wanted to do well in this class. I watched him, I went to pick him up from school and the pep that this kid had in his step when he walked out, he didn't even have to open his mouth. <laughs> I knew when he got in the car what he was going to say. Mm -hmm. So he got in the car and I said, it sure looks like you had a really, really nice day. And he goes, Mom, you're never going to believe this. I got 100% on my test. And because he had wow. stepped up to the plate and studied in a different fashion and a different way, this was a kid that did not get awarded a medal just because he was in class. But he got awarded something because he stepped up to the plate to build the character that was demanded of him. He and it. he earned it and yeah. he knew it. Yes. He knew it. Yes. Uh, he's a tennis player, as you know, and he's um, just doing amazing. And sports brings up a lot of this kind of stuff. Yeah. He's received lots of accolades. He's ranked right now pretty top in his oh, age level. But, but but at the, one of the tournaments that he had entered, um, it was one of those grueling tournaments that he, every single t match was a battle. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, when he came home, exhausted, tired, literally mud on the face, that trophy that he received sits at a different part of his shelf. That's right. That's right. So even the kids recognize it. They may not love it that they mm -hmm. have to study until 10 o'clock at night or have to show up to practice when they don't want to. No, they may not. They may not like it, but they certainly will appreciate it. And we recognize as, as parents and leaders how formative that experience is. What I love about your story is that you guys leaned in to the challenge, the difficulty, the rigor, and said as parents, we recognize that ultimately our son is going to be better off for this experience. And not only did he leave, of course, uh, you know, I think it's implied the, the academic, uh, his academic knowledge and ability certainly was to a different degree than it was prior to the class and the experience, but his character, That's his it. performance character, his intellectual character. And boy, when we think about foundations, I cannot think of a better uh, foundation that we want to form in our kids. I want to share with those of you uh, who are, are tuning in to our viewers, if you haven't had a chance to see it, uh, I recently, along with our VCS Board of Directors, hosted a State of the School on Faith Family Foundations. We recorded it via, uh, via podcast. And so I'm going to go ahead and sh uh, throw that into the link to that podcast, into the video notes and the slides that I used as well. And I want to encourage our families, if you haven't had a chance to listen and access those slides, it's wonderful information about the future of our school and what this maxim is and how we're going to embrace it as a, as a community. So once again, I want to say thank you for joining, Victoria. This was such a pleasure. I really appreciate you saying yes. Pleasure is all mine. I hope that there is some value and our viewers, viewers find some value in what I have shared. And I'm always open. This is such a passionate subject for me. I love this school. I want this school to flourish. And we need to partner with more parents to be involved in terms of bringing our ideas to Ben because collectively, individually, we may not have all the answers, but I think collectively, we have a lot more than we think. Oh, wonderful. I love that. That's a great note to end on. Thank you, Victoria. Thanks once again for our listeners for 
uh, viewers for tuning in. And uh, next month, we're gonna have coffee on campus. It's not gonna be virtual. And so I look forward to seeing you guys then. So thanks a lot for joining.